Uh, hello everybody, so today is the day that we are uh, leaving Mexico and going to Guatemala. So I thought I'd um, just uh, say a couple things about, uh, about Mexico, uh, just some facts, uh, I guess about Mexico and about cycle touring in Mexico. Uh, Mexico has like a diverse, pretty diverse range of climates. Uh, you know, where I cycled, uh, it was kind of, there was desert, uh, which is mostly in, uh, Baja, California, but there's also some, uh, dry parts on the mainland, um, that I've been through. Uh, there's, uh, kind of a very humid, uh, sort of rainforest type places, uh, and then... Uh, it, and then you could go higher up where it's uh, kind of more a more temperate climate. So uh, a lot of the cities are actually higher up because of this, I think. I think, uh, I mean, I watched the video on this. Um, uh, like all the arable land is actually like, you know, high up in the mountains. Uh, I've been to three kind of big cities, uh, Guadalajara, uh, Ciudad de Mexico and Oaxaca. Um, I saw a video saying that Guadalajara is like the most beautiful city uh, in Mexico. Uh, and the downtown is really nice, a lot of old buildings. Um, Ciudad de Mexico was cool. It was uh, uh, really interesting how high up it was. And um, I also saw a comment somewhere saying that uh, Oaxaca is uh, a very, very uh, native native state in um, in Mexico, and that, uh, and I don't know. Uh, it's a it's a cool city. A lot of people really like it, and uh, I enjoyed the the ruins around uh, around Oaxaca as well. So some things you should know while cycle touring in Mexico, some, some places, there's uh, Oxos, Oxos are big, so that's like your, it's kind of like a convenience store, so it's, it feels like something you would, uh, in North America, you, it kind of feels like a gas station store, except it's not a gas station, it, there's no gas sold at Oxos. Uh, but uh, if you're kind of planning, uh, what to eat regularly uh, while cycle touring. Uh, it's good to plan around uh, what you could find at Oxos. Uh, there's also Pemexes. Pemexes are uh, a, a type of gas station, um, the most common type of gas station. And uh, cool thing about those is uh, I think we've pretty much had a hundred percent success rate of like asking to 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 camp near there and being able to. So, yeah, so uh, the other, the other um, place where uh, you could get a place to camp are at the Bomberos, the firefighters. Um, so I would say that's about like 90 or 80 percent success rate. Uh, yeah, so you just uh, ask to stay there for one night and uh, yeah, sometimes they even feed you, sometimes you could have a shower, sometimes you could sleep indoors, uh, other times, you know, you're, they move, a, they move a fire truck for you and you could sleep outside. In terms of uh, getting food and water, I mentioned there's Oxos, right, which is kind of a convenience store that's like everywhere, and it's easy to find. Uh, there's other, there's other grocery stores um, uh, where you could, uh, find everything all in one place, but in Mexico there's also a lot of very uh, specialized stores, so like a fruteria where they have like fruits, or uh, I think pan panaria where they have pan which is uh, bread and bread like things. Um, the, the big ones that I use are the um, uh, tortilleria, so I buy tortillas. Uh, which you could get at uh, maybe three or four times less the price than OXO. Although, I think partly that's because um, 
corn, corn tortillas are cheaper than um, uh, wheat tortillas. Uh, there's also the uh, purificadora, the purificadoras de, de agua, so water purification plants or whatever. Um, so you can't really, you can't drink the water and uh, you can't drink the tap water in uh, Mexico. So um, you need to either buy bottled water or get water from the purificadora. So bottled water, I don't know, it might be as like 15 or 20 pesos per liter, which is uh, uh, maybe about a dollar, uh, a dollar uh, USD. Um, but uh, yeah, but uh, in purificadoras, you could get something like one one peso per liter. Sometimes they they even give you water for free. Uh, yeah, sometimes maybe it's up to I'm gonna say three or four pesos per liter, but not really, not really more than that. Uh, the traffic, the the cars in Mexico, the drivers are uh, really nice. You know the you know it kind of feels very cooperative like the way that everyone drives in some ways uh so i actually feel very safe on the roads even though it, even when it's like really chaotic and uh despite there not being a lot of bicycle infrastructure uh i feel uh generally pretty safe in mexico um like on the one hand, like, uh, there is, like, a reputation surrounding Mexico and surrounding, like, cartels, and, uh, on the one hand, I, I personally haven't, like, seen anything, like, seen any cartels or cartel activity or, like, anyone that looks, like, uh, looks dangerous. Um, uh, I know it also depends on what areas you go to. Um, so some states, some cities, you know, are more dangerous than others, and I'm, I probably just don't see some of the things as well that I should be seeing, but, um, I think it all is, is also, like, relatively safe. Um, since, uh, 2022, there's also been, uh, um, kind of a migrant crisis, uh, of uh, migrants coming from, um, I think the three major countries are Venezuela, uh, Haiti, and um, Ecuador. Uh, so they kind of start off in South America and go through the through the Darien Gap, and then generally are trying to make it to um, to the United States. Uh, I you know I don't know the details or the legality of all this or the technicalities. Uh, but, um, I guess the consequence is that you see, uh, a lot of migrants often walking in between towns. Um, yeah, so there was, there was one night where we, uh, slept at a Pemex and, um, yeah, we were just, uh, I mean, you know, we don't have very much. We have, you know, our bikes, some stuff and our, our tents, right? But uh, uh, we were kind of sur surrounded by, like, um, in terms of sleeping, like, 20 or so uh, Venezuelans just sleeping on, like, um, I think someone gave out, like, cardboard boxes and stuff, right? So just put cardboard on the ground, and then some of them have blankets. I think there was one tent. Um, and it's like all kinds of people, right? Like men, women, uh, children, lots of children. Uh, so, I don't know, I just say this because it's like something to note, right? Like being in the middle of all this and uh, I, I don't know, it, it, uh, I don't know if it's like humbling in some sense, but um, yeah, yeah you know, like, you kind of, sometimes you think, oh, you're, like, this badass cycling places, right, but, like, these, these people, like, they get rides sometimes, but I'd say, I'd say they're probably walking, like, half the distance, you know, from, uh, uh, let's say from Colombia or something to, um, 
to uh, the Mexican-United States border. Uh, so the ones I talked to, uh, they said they were traveling for, for two months. Yeah. So far. Okay, well, um, yeah, I guess that's it for, for Mexico. Uh, we're just gonna head to the Guatemalan border now. Uh, and just a couple more thoughts, I guess, on Mexico. Um, I really like the people. Like, um, you know, I feel like everyone's a lot more relaxed, especially when I first entered in, like, Baja, California. Uh, so I call my uh, friends sometimes in Canada. I'm thinking about people in the States, right? Everyone's like, you know, like, <laughs> it's like a totally different life, you know? Um, I really like how colorful everything is, like with all the flags and stuff during like, like around the time of different celebrations, like uh, uh, the Day of the Dead and Independence Day. Um, and yeah, I think my favorite thing has got to be like um, visiting like little to medium sized towns, like um, maybe around 10,000 people, like in the mountains, you know. Um, and uh, just sitting around the um, the town squares, you know, they're a lot livelier than any um, than than um, town squares and downtowns you see in um, North America and uh, you know Canada and the states. <laughs>